Your typical disc. Uh, where's my mouse? And we, yeah, I can just scroll up. So this is the hard drive, hard drive inside my computer. So the, the device name is SDA, which is your typical SDA, SDB, uh, SATA device A, I think is what it stands for. And then the partitions is SDA1, SDA2, SDA5, SDA6. Um, so that's what you give a thing. Should have had that number at the end. We'll start with them. Start in megabytes. Start. They are separate numbers. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, I can never. I can never calculate that out when I'm looking at it. Yeah. Uh, when you're doing, when you're using the fdisk command to actually format, or, uh, change partitions on disks, yeah. you can say plus, or you can say like eight megs or eight gigs, yeah. and put a G at the end, and so you don't have to calculate out for uh, separate numbers and stuff. There's also, you know, commands. I think it's like df with a dash h to give you human readable. Df is the this. current mounted. Um, drives. Mm -hmm. so and, that, but, and DF doesn't always give you the exact, <laughs> it's only if it's mounted, it gives you the device name, number. Uh, so you hit enter. It gives no output while it's doing it, but right now it's right into that SD card. And in Linux, when your command's done, it just goes back to the command prompt. It, almost, a lot of them doesn't give you any info, but this one it did this time. It gave us, gave us how many bytes in and out, and blah, blah, blah. And that's it. So now we pop it into your Raspberry Pi 2, and we boot it up. We All right, so. <laughs> so this is that, give it a second, DF minus H. And it did mount, but. Um, Where's the file on there that I will uh, modify for like the controller? This one, I have to remount it to look at the file system. Yeah, so I can get the You'll have to Google it. Okay. Because I can't remember. I don't think it's in here. Actually, this whole. Um, Files we're looking at right now are just going to change after the first time it boots. Okay. It actually does install. So why don't we do that now? Yeah. Like they said, any PS3 controllers they know work out of the box. Okay. PS4 controllers work. If you want to use the wireless ones, uh -huh. you'll have to get a Bluetooth adapter to also go on here. Okay. Go ahead. You don't have to have the power in here. You have mine. Okay. Look how far we want. Just put it right here. Oh, uh, here? Oh. Try this? Yeah. Tony, try this. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got the bigger one here too, somewhere. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, set it. Okay. I'm very proud. I got one of these too. Okay. No, it seems to be working. It's cool. doesn't give any output, I think, that first time while it's doing that install. I want to say instructions was, I have the website up. It's just you wait and then it, I think the power light blinks on it. So it says put the SD card in your high, put the HDMI in, light up your TV, plug in, so you don't have to have the Ethernet for this, but you can if you want. Um, The controller is supposed to be plugged in before we boot it. And then 
Oh, it says wait 30 seconds. So if, and we should see that output. Is there a problem with that? Is the power not working? Here, you get this. Okay, let's... Okay, so how long does it last? About 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I think the cord is just uh, it's finicky. Yeah. Here we go. Can you buy the new Raspberry Pis in stores or do you have to buy online? Microsoft sells them. They even sell a starter pack. Nice. Oh, yeah, he's the one that's Starter packs usually easy to go with. It's a little more expensive, but you get everything you need. So they don't have the SD card in case the power is going to buy a starter pack. Can you guys talk with them that if you, for example, reference the cloud where something is supposed to be nice for you? I'm sorry, I couldn't imagine. For people who are coming in and we're from the GPI basically referring them to Micro Center, essentially. <laughs> Micro Center is big enough that they don't care. To your, to the MD log, essentially. No, we're not big enough for Didn't work there, guy. To do what? Uh, have Micro Center reference, uh, send people to us. No, I have, no, no, have, no, have no, no, us no, no. get, have Micro Center give members a discount <laughs> because they, we we're not like a big enough organization. Well, you know what? I think it requires it. There's an affinity, uh, I think, to um, a two amp adapter now, doesn't it? The, the Raspberry Pi 2 does. Really? So all the ones I have now aren't going to be good enough? The freaking USB power source. Dang. Yeah, well, yeah, it's micro SD, but a lot of them, like the phone chargers, up until the last couple of gens, are all uh, like one or one and a half amp. Or, you need a two amp uh, power adapter. Do I have to throw all of my stuff Actually, away? I, <laughs> well, it's good you told me that. I didn't know. Yeah. Well, I've been struggling with that for a long while. <laughs> I have a bag of them just in case there's any questions. It's all right. Tony's got it. Yeah. Covered it. Well, maybe that's why they were so cheap at the store, right? <laughs> the power adapters? Yeah. I guess what you, guys, what, what you guys are also saying is that eventually each one of us will be walking with these big bags and those kind of boxes, right? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> well, that's what we take around. But, you know, I, this is the first time I've taken mine out of my house. Okay. I generally plug it into the TV and it just sits there forever. So one of the jokes that I had when I first got it was it cost me thirty-five dollars to buy it, and then it had spent money on you know the, the real nice keyboard and this and that and everything. There's all kinds of junk that peripherals and stuff. And yeah, so it's like really small, it fits in your pocket. But guess what? You have this big bag that you have to carry around with all your yeah. junk on it. Ooh, that's weird. It really got warm here. It must have really been a whole lot of amperage. Yeah, that was what I ran into when I first bought my Raspberry Pi. Case for it. I spent a little bit more than half on the case is what I did on the pod. Like, oh. hmm. Should we give us like a little flower on the screen? I think you're about ready for the Simple. Can oh, I ask yeah. you a quick, quick mm -hmm. question? You said this uh, the Slack channel. Where do you go for the Slack channel? Like, Slack. Oh, it's just this. Uh, it's this. I guess um, platform that kind of works on your phone. Oh, an app. Phone? You download an it's, app to get access. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's just an app. It's also a native desktop app as well. I think definitely for Mac. I'm not sure about Windows. Um, and it's also a website. Mm -hmm. It's like collaboration software. Yeah, okay. technically it started for companies, but I've just used it for like everything. So, uh, like to get you in to do a presentation on it sometime. I mean, you guys should definitely start using it. I think, um, I think it kind of does have its roots in IRC, which is why probably why people love it. I have no idea. 
it's it's a funny story actually. The guy who built Slack is the same guy who also created Flickr, and both mm. times he was actually trying to form a massive multiplayer online game that failed. The first time he noticed the only thing people used in his game was like the photo sharing app, so he's like, okay, I'll turn it into Flickr. And the second time when he tried to rebuild it, he noticed the only thing that well, but he actually built his own messaging like software just so his team members could collaborate, and his game failed once again. But then his <laughs> messaging software took off. Okay. So please engage with us and yeah, get involved yeah. and let us know. So yeah. Sure yeah. Uh, so president at mdlug.org. That's an email address. It's an old school <laughs> thing that people. I use, use. email. <laughs> Even you have if to Slack explain is killing, it, you know? <laughs> killing email, I still use email. We're, the general discussions like what we're doing right now is on our discuss list. Okay. There's like five lists on there. So if you want just general stuff, there's a newbie list. So okay. if you're going to be asking, if you have a lot of questions about how to set up whatever, I will probably have that that'd be too. a good thing. Um, I don't know how, that one I'm not on, so I don't know no, how busy it, it is. It, I don't think the other, it's really discuss is the only one. Yeah, discuss is our popular one. I think probably the word has, I mean, in, we saw like a flyer around the company. So there's like three of us working and we saw the same flyer. So uh, which? I think yeah, I worked for it actually. For so the, uh, oh, okay. So, for credit. yeah, I put those up. Okay. So I'm, I'm at fault for that one. Okay. So cool. I put three people in. That's <laughs> yeah, cool. So <laughs> I saw it. I was like, I need to write it down. And basically, we were start talking. How about that? You got three game. members, Gibbs. Dan over there. We were talking on the phone, I told him, I just mm -hmm. bought a raspberry, okay. and he said, hey, your timing's good. Good timing. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, you know, people probably haven't seen things. They won't see it. They see it. I think it's, uh, I've seen it at Barnes & Noble, for example, Raspberry Pi, and I'm like, okay, I need to come back again. You know, it's sort of a bit disconcerting when you are in the IT world, and every time you see something, you're like, I've never heard of this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what this yeah. is. So, it's overwhelming. Let me just go have, you know, a piece of pie, and then come back, maybe one of these days, talk about it, see if I could do something. Well, for me, the thing that's exciting is it's so cheap and easy to yeah. use. And, you know, I remember paying $3,000 for a desktop computer back in the 80s, and it's like, you know, just so, so easy to use and cheap now. Very exciting. It certainly has a lot of education.